I'm probably going to need something stronger than red wine to get through the rest of these episodes of this beyond mediocre superhero show. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis, and of course, keeping it real when it comes to theme parks. And in this video, I'm actually reviewing, reacting to uh, episode five of She-Hulk attorney at law the mcu show that is currently airing on disney plus now to be completely honest with you this review is coming a bit late because frankly it, it, this show serves no purpose well i shouldn't say it doesn't serve any purpose the purpose that it serves is not a good one. It's really not. But your girl's gonna get into it with a stream of consciousness, I would say, um, reaction to this latest episode. But before I get started, folks, please do your girl a favor, hit that subscribe button. And then once you do, please hit that notification bell so you can be notified when your girl has hot, fresh content to enjoy. So with that said, Lord, let's get into it. Okay, so overall theme of this episode, She-Hulk needs a suit. And Jen should have thought about trademarking She-Hulk. Because apparently Titania has decided to... Um, Take the She-Hulk name and use it for a line of products because she is a beauty and style influencer. Now, as you can tell, your girl loves beauty products. If I did not get into the pop culture sphere as fast as I did, I probably would have wound up in the, you know, beauty influencer, you know, type of, of sphere. Well, Titan is getting her hustle on, but apparently uh, using She-Hulk's name and uh, Jen needs to get this uh, trademark thing figured out. So she has one of the lawyers in her firm represent her, a lawyer who doesn't really like her very much and is a much, much better dresser than uh, she is. So to make a long story shorter, I guess perhaps, uh, perhaps even longer, in order for Jen to show that she is identified with the She-Hulk name, they drag in the list of her failed uh was it matcher? I was about to say Tinder. Matcher dates to come in, including the hot pediatric oncologist who uh, is just not turned on by her as uh, as Jen. So they go through all of those, you know, humiliating stories like, uh, yeah, she's just not my type or yeah, she's kind of a try hard or speaking in a third person, I don't really like that. But eh, long story short, they parade that around to basically rattle her self-esteem. And in a nutshell, Judge says, okay, Titania, you can't use a She-Hulk moniker anymore. Uh, destroy all the stuff that you got with her name on it. Case closed. Okay. Oh, did I mention She-Hulk is trying to get a new suit? Yes. Yes. So apparently Pug, who I love. And Slick Nick, who I, I do, I do like Nikki. She's a, she's a lot of fun. Apparently, uh, go through some backdoor way to find a 
designer who actually specializes in doing suits and armor and all the other accoutrements for superheroes. I did not know this was a thing. But I also didn't know that Iron Man 3s were a, 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 a thing. Apparently, I guess it's like the Air Force One sneaker. Um, coincidentally, Iron Man 3 sucked. It really did. I love Tony Stark, but dag on it. it Bump that movie. So they find themselves, you know, basically your typical self-absorbed, narcissistic, genius in his mind because his designs are genius designer who, you know, they finally get in touch with to make Jen a, uh, a suit. Of course, the designer says that he doesn't design basic ish. And I completely agree with him. Why are you going to find this dude who designs, you know, suits to withstand, you know, extreme temperatures, close combat, you know, stuff like that. She just wants a freaking suit. So she shows dude how she can go from being, you know, big Hulk to little Jen to back to Hulk. So apparently our designer is inspired and tells Tinsley, we're going to need the stretch wool and lots and lots of fabric. So in the end, Jen goes and picks up her suit. She apparently tries it on. We can't see that. And she's like, oh my God. Designer's like, yes, of course, I'm a genius. And he's like, I have a little bonus for you. I'm of the impression this is probably going to be the wraparound dress that we've probably seen in the uh, trailer. We'll probably see her at, you know, the one that makes her ass look good. Because she has no ass. Just, just, saying, just saying. But anyway, that's basically the whole show. Totally. Like I say, I do like Nick and I do like Pug. I do like them, you know, getting into all kinds of shenanigans in this episode. They're, you know, secondary characters. I happen to like them because they're fun. Let's see. The other attorney in the office, I actually do like her too. I like it when she basically told Jen she needs to stop dressing so sloppy for a court, like, you know, she's a defendant in a DUI, uh, DUI case. I thought that was funny. Let's see. What else did I like about this, uh, about this episode? I like the pretentious designer. I thought he was kind of funny. I empathized with how little patience he had for this freaking nonsense <laughs> going on until he realizes that, you know, designing a suit for Jen will actually be some kind of a, some kind of challenge. And of course, I also like Titania getting her hustle on. Um, her outfit was better than the first outfit that we saw her on in. That was crap. Um, the wig I still do not like. Her makeup was on freaking point though. I did, uh, I did like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so let's get to what I uh, do not like about this episode. I still don't give a crap about Jim Walters. What What is there in this whole episode that makes her likable? Nothing. Even when her ex-boyfriends, well, I shouldn't say ex-boyfriends, um, failed first dates gone wrong, or I guess in the case of the pediatric oncologist booty call gone wrong, uh, anyway. You know, I didn't care for her. I, I was laughing at her, really, when they were up there talking about, you know, pretty much how crappy the date was and how she's just not a uh, not their not their type. You know, and what was up with the Tinder ad? Lean, green, and poured into these jeans. That just sounds so freaking uh, cheesy. But anyway, so with that. Again, Jen is still whiny when she goes whining to the uh, style and beauty influencer, aka Titania, about using, you know, her copyright. The way she looks, she just looks dumpy. And I can't help but think that her whole attitude towards Titania taking her trademark, this is just me, 
it just seems like, again, a slam against femininity, a slam against an expression of, uh, of femininity. Beauty is the most feminine industry that you can think of. And I just find it really aggravating that she's just irritated at this beauty influencer because she is a beauty uh, influencer. Something tells me that if she wasn't selling beauty products, you know, booty booster and face serum and lip venom and all this other stuff that she probably would not have paid attention to this whole trademark, uh, trademark thing. But that's just me. Also, I'm really getting sick and tired of men being trashed in this. Where do you think I get that from? Okay, well, first of all, after the failed dates, her failed first dates, show up in the courtroom, it's pretty obvious that they're making these guys out to be complete jerks just for their initial impressions. This wasn't a relationship. This was the first date. You win some, you lose some, you shake it off, and you move on. But at the end of the episode, there's this scene in the bar where Jen takes her lawyer out or her co-worker out for, you know, a celebratory drink or whatever, and they just basically sit there whining, moaning, and complaining that they're not good enough. You know, the guys aren't good. Basically, I'm paraphrasing here, but here's the old attitude of you could be whatever and these guys would still find something wrong with you. Crap, crap, crap on men. Let's just crap on men. They're freaking useless. I really didn't appreciate that. I don't see the need for that. Jessica Gal, I'm sorry if the hot guy that you like turned you down. And but if you have feelings over that. We do not need to see this on television. We really, uh, we really don't. I found it to be belittling. I found it to be petty. And yet another confirmation that this show is nothing but third wave feminism to basically humiliate men for the sake of elevating women. And I see right freaking through it. Now, overall, um, you're probably like, Lorena, why are you still freaking watching the show? Well, okay, besides reviewing it, so I know what the heck I'm talking about. The incidental characters are actually the ones I care about. I care about Nikki. I care about Pug. You know, I care about Titania. I freaking love that chick. I was sad that she lost, you know, that she lost in court. I even cared about... You know, the guy who ran the Boba Tea Shop, who was actually the front for the superhero designer, I felt more for him selling his bootleg merchandise than I did for Jen Walters, a.k.a. She-Hulk, which is a shame because this is supposed to be a Marvel show. The focus is supposed to be on She-Hulk, and I don't even freaking like her. I don't care what happens to her. Um... I find it funny that her dates found her boring. <laughs> I got nothing. I'm not, I'm not interested in her. And you can go ahead and call me sexist uh, all you want. This show is pointless with respect to developing She-Hulk. I mean, if you wanted a one-off show called What Happens in the Superhero Law Division Stays in the Superhero Law Division, I'd be all down with this show because that would be freaking funny to see the parade of clients that would come through. But if this is a vehicle as supposedly it is to introduce people to She-Hulk who don't know, who've never heard of the character before, or for the ones that know and love the character, for the comments to see, sorry, comics. I had a little too much here, <laughs> which I have to to watch this show. Um, if you know her from the comics, you're looking for something new and also something familiar about her from the comics. This whole series is a slap on the face to the character. It's obvious that the people writing this show have zero familiarity or any reverence for the character and the source material that she comes from. So, again, I'm continuing to watch, but only for the uh, secondary characters. I want to see Wongers and Madison, see what they've been up to and drinking lately. And um, I don't give a 
freak about Jim Walters. Daggone it. I just don't. This show is a waste of time and a waste of space. <laughs> but I guess Disney needed something to fill that MCU space, right? <laughs> God, this show sucks. All right, so that was your girl's um, off-the-cuff opinion um, about this uh, about this show. Let me know in the comments what uh, what you think about this show. I know some of you are just like, <laughs> I'm not freaking watching this anymore. Or you're probably just like, eh. No, I'm not watching the show anymore. I'm just watching your reactions to the show. Or if you are still watching the show, is there anything that you like about the show? I've been honest. Pug and Nikki, I love them freaking too. I love them. Um, Titania, unless she puts her foot in Jen's ass, um, girl, I love you, but you got to either do something or get out. Just saying. So folks, if you got some value from this video, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you didn't, well, I at least hope you got a few laughs out of it at my uh, at my pain. <laughs> so until next time, I uh, will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh my God, four more episodes. <sighs> I may be graduating to uh, Stolichnaya. Naya.